This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Uh, this lecture is on Chapter 9 of the free paper F2 lecture notes. Uh, and as you can see, it's headed up uh, Management Accountants Profit Statement, Absorption Costing. Um, and the Management Accountants Profit Statement, as you'll see um, in this and the next chapter, there are two different ways that management accountants might choose to go about preparing a profit statement and calculating the profit. Absorption costing, which is this chapter, and marginal costing, which is the next chapter. Uh, and remember, we're not financial accountants where there are rules about how we prepare profit statements. Management accountants, I remember saying, and I think it was the very first lecture, the management accountants, there are no rules. They do what they want, whatever they find most useful. Which is why uh, there are these similarly two different ways of going about it. Anyway, this first one, absorption costing, to explain what it is and where a little problem arises, have a look at example one with me. XPLC produces one product, desks. Each desk is budgeted to require four kilos of wood, four hours of labour, the repairable production overheads. Uh, there are also fixed production overheads. Selling price is fixed at 35. There's a variable selling cost and a fixed selling cost. And during the first two months, XPLC expects the following levels of activity. Well, read all the details we need it. Uh, but part A asks us to prepare a cost card using absorption costing. And it's very much uh, how we've been doing it in earlier chapters. Uh, let's work out the dollars per unit, the cost per unit. If we go back to the top, each desk is budgeted to require uh, four kilos of wood. That's our materials, so we've got materials. Uh, four kilos. Each kilo is budgeted to cost three dollars. So twelve dollars per unit. In addition, we've got labour. There are four hours of labour, two dollars per hour, eight. Uh, and in addition, variable production overheads. Five dollars and fixed production overheads. Ah, we're going to need to absorb. They're budgeted at 20,000 a month. On average, we expect to produce 10,000 units a month. So the simplest absorption you could hope for, 20,000 overheads, on average 10,000 units. And so the production overhead's $2 a unit, giving a total production cost of 25 27 per unit. Uh, note that we're only bringing in production costs. In the cost card, we only ever bring in production costs. Uh, there are other costs mentioned. Further down, a variable selling cost, a fixed selling cost. In exams, they're not usually there anyway, but although they will affect the profit ultimately, uh, they're not part of the cost card. The cost card is only ever looking at the cost of production. That 27 is known as the full cost or the absorption cost. You will see in the next chapter um, with marginal costing, uh, we set the cost card up slightly differently, but I'm not worried about that for the moment. All right, um, it then wants us to prepare a profit statement. Well, I will in a minute prepare a full profit statement, but let's just write down what profit we're expecting in January. Uh, the budgeted profit, surely. Well, we're expecting to sell 9,000 units. Uh, 
Uh, how much profit per unit do we expect to make? Uh, well, if you look back, the selling price is fixed at 35. Uh, we've got a, a, co a production cost of 27, which leaves us with $8. And so it would appear we're expecting to make 72,000 uh, before selling costs. Obviously, there are selling costs. We'll worry about them later. Now that seems to be the case, but as you're going to see in a minute, there is actually a problem. I'll explain why in a second, but although management may be expecting 72,000, it's not going to be 72,000 at all. And let me show you why by doing a full profit statement. Now you're never going to have to write up a full profit statement in the exam, never. But I need to here to explain why we've got a problem. So again, January. Let's write up a full statement. First of all, sales. It says in January we expect to sell 9,000 units. Uh, the selling price, where is it? 35 a unit. So the sales revenue 9,035, whoops, 315,000. Uh, to get the profit, uh, we need to subtract the cost of sales. And to get the cost of, what, of the 9,000 sold, We'll take the cost of the uh, 11,000 we produced less the closing inventory. Because obviously if you produce 11 and only sell 9, you have a closing inventory of 2,000. So first of all, production, which remember is 11,000 units. Materials, how much are we budgeting? Now if you look back at the cost card, $12 a unit. And so 11,000 units at $12, we're budgeting on spending 132,000. Um, labour, sorry, I'm doing my line. Uh, labour, we're budgeting on what was it? I think it was $8 a unit. So 11,000 units, 88,000. Variable overheads. They were $5 a unit. So 11,000 at 5 is 55,000. And fixed overheads. In our cost card, we had $2 a unit. 11,000 at $2 is 22,000. Now you already may be starting to worry about something, but for the moment, be patient with me, I will explain. Uh, but be clear where all those figures have come from. We've produced 11,000 units, and I've simply taken uh, the unit cost from the cost card. And as a result, I've got a total of... Uh, 297,000. And of course, I could, in fact, have written that straight down, uh, because we produced 11,000. Uh, the cost per unit is 27. And I could have written the total straight down. 11,000 at 27 is 297. However, that's the budgeted cost of the 11,000 we're producing. To get the cost of the 9,000 we're selling, we need to subtract the closing inventory. And as I said earlier, if we produce 11,000 and only sell 9,000, with closing inventory of 2,000 units, the cost per unit is $27, so a total of 54,000, leaving us with 243,000 as the cost of what we actually sold. 
And so uh, what's the budgeted profit so far? Remember, there are some selling costs which I'll bring in later. Uh, but the budgeted profit, 315 less 243, 72,000. And again, I could have written that straight down. Well, we did write it straight down before because, if we change the colour, uh, what were the sales? The sales were 9,000 units. And the budgeted profit per unit, selling price 35, cost 27, $8. So fine. I say you'll never have to do a full profit statement. We could have written the 72,000 straight down. Uh, but there is sort of how it arrived. But before we look at selling costs, there's a problem. And the problem, it may have occurred to you as we were doing it, that we've put in there 22,000 for fixed overheads. And you can see how I got the figure. 11,000 units produced, $2 a unit from the cost card, 22,000. But we're not expecting the fixed overheads to be 22,000 at all. It said earlier, fixed overheads are budgeted at 20,000 a month. And if they budget 20,000, it should be 20,000, whether you produce more, whether you produce less. Fixed overheads should stay fixed. And so the fixed overheads are, we're not really expecting 22 at all. And if the fixed overheads aren't 22, the profit's not going to be 72. So why didn't we just put in the right figure? Well, we can't really. I mean, if we're doing absorption costing, we're basing it on the assumption that each unit will cost $27 from the cost card and that therefore the profit will be $8 a unit, the, the way I've done it. But we can't leave it at 72. We're need, going to need then an adjustment to correct it. We need an adjustment And how much do we need to adjust by? Here, the actual fixed overheads, the true budgeted figure, is 20,000. You're expecting 20,000 a month. But with absorption costing, we're rather forced to bring in fixed overheads at $2 a unit produced. The amount that's actually been charged or absorbed the amount we've currently charged or absorbed in that profit statement is 22,000. And so we've charged too much. We've what we call over absorbed. And so what should the profit be before we bring in these selling costs? We had 72, but we charged in the statement 22,000 for fixed overheads. We'd overcharged, overabsorbed, we'd charged 2,000 too much. Well, to correct it, the actual cost should be 2,000 lower. The profit, therefore, should be 2,000 higher. We need that correction. Now here, uh, we did know, of course, that uh, we have charged 22,000 because I'd written up the full statement. But make sure you see where that came from, because if you haven't got the full statement, remember I said at the beginning, we could write the 72,000 down straight away. But we still need that adjustment. Um, and the amount absorbed is the actual production which was 11,000 units at the fixed overheads per unit, which was $2. We've corrected it. 
We get 72,000 based on the standard profit of $8 a unit. We've now done the, this little adjustment to correct for the over absorption. And the profit now is 74,000. Uh, all right, there are selling costs, so um, let's subtract them. But they're never a problem, and they're rarely relevant in the exam anyway, but if there are any other costs, they come off later. And what are the selling costs? It says there's a variable selling cost of a dollar per unit. Well, selling costs are always based on the units sold. So how many did we sell? 9,000 at a dollar. So a total of 9,000. Uh, and in addition, there's a fixed selling cost of 2,000 a month. So a total of 11. And so the final profit is 63,000. But I say again, it's rare that there are any other costs, and even if there are any other costs, there's never a problem. It's only the production costs um, where we're absorbed, well, sorry, it's only the fixed production overheads that are being absorbed into the cost of goods sold. But again, we've got that problem. All right, that was January. Let's look at February. And this time, I'm not going to write up a full profit statement. If you want to, have a go, and you'll find an answer at the back. But I keep saying, um, in the exam, you'll never be asked for a full profit statement. They'll simply want to know what's the profit using absorption costing. And so let's do it. In February, uh, we produced 9,500 units. We sold 11,500. And do remember, there were already 2,000 units in inventory at the end of January. So we started February with 2,000, produced another 9,500, gave us 11,500, which we sold. How much profit are you expecting? Well, the sales are 11,500. Uh, the standard profit per unit Uh, again, uh, selling price was 75. Um, the production cost, I forgot what it was, 67, was it? 27. And so the selling price wasn't 75 at all, it was 35. Um, production cost 27, so $8 a unit. That gives us 92,000. Uh, but still, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with the selling costs at the end. But for getting selling costs, again, that isn't the actual profit we expect because of this business of absorbing overheads. So the adjustment... What should the actual fixed overheads will be? <clears throat> 20000 a month. But how much will we have absorbed in arriving at 92,000? Since we've taken a profit of $8 a unit, we've effectively treated fixed overheads as being $2 a unit. And so the amount that would have been absorbed as before is the actual production how much was the production this time? Nine and a half thousand units. And if we did have a full profit statement, every unit produced will have been charged at two dollars a unit. The standard cost of the fixed overheads. So the amount that will have been in the profit statement is nineteen thousand. Uh, and therefore, we've got a difference of a thousand. And which way around is it this time? This time, in arriving at our profit, we'll have only charged 19,000. And yet, we should really be charging 20. We've undercharged, we've underabsorbed. absorbed 
And if you've undercharged, what's going to happen when we correct the profit? In arriving at 92, we've only charged 19, and we should have charged 20, we should have charged an extra thousand. And so charging an extra thousand will reduce the profit to 91. Now again, I will subtract uh, the selling costs, but they're never a problem. But do make sure you've got that. I've kept saying, you'll never be required to produce the full statement. It's easy to work out the 92,000. I hope I've got it right, 88, yes I have. You know, it's a unit sold at standard profit. Uh, but it's working out this adjustment for the under or over absorption of the fixed overheads. Uh, and if you're at all unsure, write up a full profit statement for February, just the way I did for January. Have a go, check with the answer, uh, and check that the fixed overheads in it will be 19, but they should be 20. We need to adjust by 1,000. Uh, for completeness, obviously, I will subtract the um, selling costs. Uh, the variable cost, again, it's always, it's a selling cost based on the number sold. So 11,500 sold is a dollar. 11,500. Uh, the fixed selling cost is 2,000 a month. Total 13,500. And so the final profit 91,000, oops, 91,000 minus 13,500 is 77,500. Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, just one extra little bit, which is uh, hopefully pretty quick, but you're bound to be asked, you see, about this under over absorption. Uh, and in this question, both in January and February, uh, we were absorbing on a unit basis. We were absorbing two dollars for every unit produced. However, if you remember from the earlier chapter on absorbing overheads, it's very common to absorb on an hourly basis. And so well, it's the same basic idea. Look at example two. Why PLC budgets on working 80,000 hours a month and having fixed overheads of 320,000? During April, the actual hours worked to 78,000 and the actual overheads are 315,500. And we're asked to calculate, they don't want a full profit statement here, they want to know the absorption rate per hour uh, and the amount of any over or under absorption of overheads. Just check me, part A should be no problem. The overhead absorption rate straight from the earlier chapter, uh, based on the budget figures, we're budgeting on 320,000 in total. We're budgeting on working 80,000 hours a month. And so it's $4 per hour. And so, although we're not doing a profit statement for the, about the 20th time, you'll never be asked for a full profit statement. If we were doing a profit statement, every hour worked would be charged at $4. And so, as a result, we're going to have this over or under absorption. What are the actual fixed overheads? Uh, 315,500. So that is the amount that should be in the profit statement when calculating profit. Uh, but how much will we have absorbed? As I say, in doing the profit statement initially, every hour worked would have been charged at that $4. So the actual hours worked, for how many? 78,000. 
Uh, what's the absorption rate per hour? We just worked out four dollars. And so in the profit statement, there'll be 78,000 times four, 312,000. So 312 is what we'll have charged in arriving at the profit. We should have charged 315,500. So there's an under absorption of the difference of 3,500. Now, that would be the end of the question. There's a nice little two-mark multiple choice. Um, as I keep saying, we won't be doing a profit statement, but what effect would it have on the profit? How would we correct it? Um, because we hadn't absorbed enough, we've only got 312, we need an extra three and a half. Extra cost would, in fact, mean lower profit. So there we are. So make sure you've got that do, you know, go back and do a full statement for February if you need. Because it's vitally important. You're bound to get asked about over under absorption. Uh, and also, because that's a problem we have with this method of costing, you'll see in the next chapter, there's an alternative uh, approach, marginal costing, which in a sense avoids that problem. However, that's the next chapter in the next lecture.